The word altruism becomes an oxymoron when used with narcissists because a narcissist can be anything in the world but a caring person. They can't think for anyone else. But then why are some narcissists so giving? Why do some narcissists step out of their way to help others? Let's find out in today's episode by understanding altruistic or communal narcissism. I am Danish, a narcissistic abuse recovery professional. Today's episode is going to be all about understanding altruistic narcissism and why it is so damaging. Before we get started, I'm really curious to know about your experiences. Was a narcissist that hurt you altruistic? If yes, in what ways? Drop your experiences in the comments below and help other survivors feel validated. Altruistic narcissism, also known as communal narcissism, is a type of covert narcissism where the narcissistic individual gains massive amounts of collective supply by being extremely nice, giving, caring, helping, and kind to others. They live through their acts of philanthropy and altruism to make you believe that they are the most helpful person you know, the most caring person in your social surroundings, and an extraordinarily trustworthy person to be in a relationship with. Their grandiosity lies in being the best at helping and giving. When they give or donate, they don't do it for the sake of giving. Instead, they do it to be seen as incredibly generous and selfless. But the monster in them is only known to you. Talking about giving, they may donate a million dollars to a school for kids with special needs or give multi-million dollars to build an entire hospital wing. They may travel thousands of miles to help people, needy people, or be the first one to show up during a crisis. They don't seem to care about how much money goes out or what they need to give up on as long as it gets them admiration. Money is rather a tool for them to mass weaponize people's biases around altruism. When someone gives and participates in selfless activities, it's natural for others to think positively about them. They do not see beyond the act though because the character that plays this act, the narcissist, does it so well that even you, who knows the narcissist's dark side, might get confused about who they truly are. An altruistic narcissist may volunteer for non-profit organizations like churches or other groups, where they can bask in the glory of acclaim from others, which is one of the most cunning techniques they use to hide their footprints. Ironically, altruistic, covert, narcissistic parents may be speaking at a conference to benefit neglected children while their kids are subsisting on peanut butter sandwiches and are deprived of love and care. What makes an altruistic narcissist so dangerous is that they genuinely believe in their fake niceness and altruism and have an innate ability to justify all their wrongdoings based on the same. This is how they manifest their entitlement. They believe they're upstanding individuals since they volunteer volunteered for a community event or an organization. They do not care about anyone, don't feel the spirit of the event, and only do things to make people regard them positive, reinforcing their already inflated sense of self-importance. What this means for you as their spouse, child, friend, or employee is extreme isolation. No one believes you because everyone, including your children, is in the hypnotic trance of the narcissist's niceness. They call you crazy for leaving such a wonderful person. Even the justice system can prove useless if the narcissist has influenced it through their kindness. Imagine the altruistic narcissist to be a well-known firefighter and then imagine filing a case against them. It is highly likely that their professional achievements would whitewash everything and you and your experiences won't even get the essential recognition or consideration for things to be just and fair. Consequently, you learn to become silent because you do not know how to speak of your experiences without sounding crazy and jealous. Although altruistic narcissists are emotionless, they use the emotional language of sympathy and empathy to manipulate their targets. It is their tactic to appear kinder and more loving human beings. They will go on and on about how much they love doing things for people, all the while belittling and looking down on them while alone. They will shed crocodile tears over how 
how much they are in pain to see other people in pain and how badly they want to fix things. They love to see you watching and consoling them when they are crying. All this altruism is ultimately used for framing. For instance, the narcissist may deny abusing you by calling you aggressive, unstable, crazy or bipolar and compare your version of the story with how great other people think they are to nullify the validity of your experiences. They may also bring in other people to shame you for accusing the narcissist of the things a person like them can never think of doing. Despite knowing you are not the one to take the blame, you continue to stay in the relationship because they condition you to believe that the problem is you. They gaslight you into accepting that you are the one who is jealous, oversensitive, demanding and insecure. Instead of deflecting their perception of yours and leaving them, you try to fix yourself out of guilt and an inflamed conscience. Underlying this altruistic facade is the underdeveloped conscience of a narcissist. They have a pseudo conscience which they use to appear normal and more likable to gain supply. Their conscience exists solely in the intellect which is purely transactional, performance based and lacks the heart component. They are well aware that what they are doing is fake and they do not care about it. As long as they get what they are seeking, everything is acceptable. Every act of altruism is an act of intentionally masking their real nature. They know they would be cancelled if others were to see through their fakeness. In a nutshell, an altruistic narcissist gains supply through their fake nice character. But all of it is a lie. It is a facade. I hope you found this episode insightful and if you did, let me know in the comments, drop a like, share this video and make sure to subscribe. I'll talk with you in the next one. Until then, let the healing begin.